This is an intermediate level tutorial where you will use a wire armature to create a figure sculpture that you then wrap in plaster cloth. And at the very end, I'll show you how to paint it using my favorite metallic dry brush technique. The results are beautiful. You do need prior knowledge. You are going to make a wire armature, but I'll put all of the information you need for that in the video. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button and support this public school teacher's side hustle. Before we start with the plaster cloth, you are going to need a wire armature, and that is going to be the support or the skeleton of your figure sculpture. So you can see I have one here, and I won't show you exactly how to make one step by step. I have a video on that process, and it's about 35 minutes long. So here's the very, very short version. You're going to use aluminum wire to build up your skeleton, focusing on the most important parts of the Measure human body. Measure to make sure that your armature demonstrates accurate proportion, and make sure that you have all of the parts of the the body flat before you go back and bulk it up to add form. Now your sculpture is going to only be as good as your armature so pay attention to the forms of the body making the chest puff out, make sure it has a butt, make sure the head is nice and spherical. Um, you're going to add plaster cloth to this. These are some finished sculptures that my students made and you could leave it just like this but in the case of this video we're going to use the wire figure to then add plaster cloth to make it even more dynamic. If you're looking for a more beginner friendly figure sculpture, this has very similar results. And I made this with tin foil and I paper mache newspaper over it. It's really great for a lower level classroom or for a beginner. And most of these materials you already have at home. Click the link above or find the link in the description box for that tutorial because this sculpture technique is a little bit more advanced and a little bit more messy too. The first step is to prepare your plaster strips. They already come in strips, but I'm going to make manageable cuts so that I can use it like bandages. It's almost like a mummy when you're adding the plaster to your sculpture. I like to pre-cut the strips because when you add water, it gets very messy. So having a stack of the plaster cloth that's cut um, and the right size really helps as you go. To activate the plaster, you are going to dip it in a cup of water and then drape it over your armature. So this is a cotton gauze that has plaster attached to it. And then when you add the warm water, it activates those sticky elements. So this gets pretty messy. I do recommend laying down some newspaper or covering your table, which you can see I did not take my own advice and I will regret. And I started up on the waist and I actually recommend starting on the lower leg, but for some reason I forget my own advice again and just kind of start randomly adding. So now that I'm kind of remembering how to do this, I'm going to wrap around the knee and it really is if you've ever used an ace bandage or if you you know, are familiar with mummies, you definitely have that feeling that it's like a mummification. So you can see it's very, very similar to paper mache. It's just plaster of Paris um, attached to the cotton gauze. So it is going to look a little bit strange at first. And like I've said before, your wire armature, it really is the base or the skeleton for your sculpture. So making sure that it's in proportion, making sure that the form is accurate, it's going to help your sculpture not look lumpy, which this one is going to be a little bit. This was an abandoned sculpture by one of my former students, Dylan. Hi Dylan, I hope you're doing well. And instead of making another wire sculpture, I just took this one since it's been hanging out in my art room for the past couple years and thought, hey, let's see if this technique works. I have done this before with a material called Paverpal and fabric, and that's a really fun way to do this technique as well. Why I like the plaster strips is you don't have to add fabric. The plaster and the fabric are already connected, so it's a simpler solution and it's way more cost effective, especially if you're doing this in the classroom. I almost have this leg finished, and so I'm going to wrap my ankle. And a lot of questions I get from students is about the foot. So you can see the foot was stapled to this piece of wood. As I demonstrated in the wire figure tutorial, remember that link is in the description box and what I do is I ball up some of the plaster and I make just a fake foot so any area that you want to bulk up or if your wire doesn't look the way you want it to look you can make fake muscles and you can make lots of texture and bulky areas simply by balling up and forming the plaster with water to the shape that you want it 
the pelvis is another area that my students struggle with. So think about it like a diaper. You don't want it to look like your sculpture is wearing a diaper, but you're gonna crisscross the strips of plaster between the legs, around the waist, making sure you have a clear separation of each leg, but also paying attention to the butt. <laughs> this is called the pelvic girdle, or sometimes I like to call it the Batman bikini just because that puts an idea of what it should look like in your head. And no offense to Dylan, Dylan did an amazing job. He made an A on this sculpture, but my connection of my pelvis to my legs are a little bit awkward. The muscle mass kind of goes in instead of staying out. And that's just a design challenge that I'll have to consider as I continue working. And you'll have the same kind of thing with your sculpture too. Things that connect beautifully and that things that just look awkward from certain angles. Remember, a sculpture like this is in the round, which means it needs to be interesting and accurate from all sides. So it's important to look at your sculpture from multiple angles and trust the process just because there's this weird gap right now. I'm just gonna keep layering, knowing that this is the first layer and I can always ball up some plaster cloth like I did on the foot. This technique is all about repetition. So let's speed things up here and let's go down from the pelvis and go back down to the foot on the other side. Let's do a time lapse here. Since this is a really easy part compared to the pelvis, it's a mummification just wrapping down the leg. So let's time lapse this here. If only I could move this fast in real life. Now that we have the legs and a weird looking pelvis, let's move on up to the torso, the chest, the shoulders, the upper body. And I'm going to be using the same technique again, taking longer strips of plaster, which I am gonna have to cut some more. And I'm gonna make these a little bit longer so I can do long wrapping. I'm gonna start just by wrapping around the waist, moving up, and it does get a little bit trickier once you get involved with the shoulders and the arms. This part though is really easy. Think like a mummy and just wrap it around, leaving no gaps and making sure the wire is totally covered. My next strip, and you can see I'm adding it with water and I'm taking my hand just to remove a little bit of the liquid. This time I'm gonna wrap it around almost like a sash. So think like a beauty pageant or like Chewbacca from Star Wars, and it will take several wraps to get the full surface area covered. Um, it also looks like a Greek toga, and I just kind of wrap it around filling up my space, making sure it sits nice and tight on the wire armature that I've created. I can always add more bulk um, later on once I've done my first layer. So I'm gonna repeat my steps and crisscross doing the sash on the other side, taking my hand and making sure the plaster cloth is really pushed down nice and tight against the wire. Crossing over the back here, very fun, it's really coming to life. And then again, just pressing down to make sure there's no weird flyaways with the fabric. This is fun, it's almost like my sculpture's wearing a little jumpsuit, but I'm gonna bulk up and add some more layers to the waist because it just looks unnaturally thin, and I wanna make sure that that area has a nice support to it. And there is some weird bulk from the wiring here. Again, Dylan, no shade to you. And I can fix that again with adding those pieces of plaster that are balled up or just accepting the fact that there might be a little bit of texture and the form doesn't have to be smooth and perfect. Think sculptures by Alberto Giacometti with that really nice kind of bronze textured look. Now it's time to focus on the connection of the shoulders and the arms, and that can be a little bit tricky. I'm taking that same looping technique and I'm extending it from the shoulder and then rounding it on the arm. This has a lot of bulk to it. I wanna make sure there's an armpit. I wanna make sure there's a shoulder, and I don't wanna overwrap the neck because that needs to be a nice delicate point as well. So the shoulder to arm is the trickier part, but just like the legs, once you get past that connection and you just kind of move down the arm using the mummy wrapping technique, covering up all the areas. I am going to cut my strips a little bit smaller since the surface area here is so much more smaller than the torso. Now that the harder part is done, I'm going to double time and speed things up again and take smaller strips of plaster, thinner strips of plaster, I should say, and looping and wrapping until I have my whole arm covered without any gaps. I'm going to skip the hands for now, and once I have the surface area covered all the way down to the wrist, let's repeat on the other side. I'm gonna keep things slow here since that arm-shoulder connection is kind of tricky, and I'm looping around, um, giving it a nice dense shoulder muscle, which will then get skinnier, of course, as the arm goes down. So that turned out pretty simple, and it also depends on the posture of your sculpture. Now with a skinnier piece, I'm looping, kind of repeating those steps with that wrap all the way down. Let's speed things up now that we're at the easy part. 
Before I finish the hands, I just can't help it. I'm ready to add plaster cloth to the head of my figure sculpture. So I'm going to take a long piece and I'm going to wrap it around the cylindrical form that Dylan sculpted in class. And right now he looks like a beekeeper, maybe like he's wearing a hazmat suit, that's funny. So I'm gonna go back in with my strips and I do need to cut more because, you know, I just randomly cut a certain amount and I like to have a variety of different lengths and different widths. So you can see how dirty my table is. I highly recommend doing this over newspaper. Let's mummify a little bit more, wrapping around so it looks like a lollipop. And then the neck is gonna be a super important component here because that's going to be what connects your neck or your torso to your head. When sculpting a neck, I like to think of it as a scarf that's wrapped you know, pretty tight. And then that gives it a really nice, because that is a thin part of your body, and that gives it a nice connection so that you're not losing that separation. You want your shoulders to be separate from the neck, to be separate from the head. And then fill in any gaps. If you have a weird shaped head, and I don't mean in real life, I mean with this sculpture, don't be afraid to bulk it up and to add texture and to add pieces to fill in any gaps or areas that you think might be awkward. Heck, you could even add a face if you wanted. Now that you have it covered, you're going to perfect the form with a second layer. Well, besides the hands, of course, I haven't shown you how to do that yet. So you're going to then think like an artist and you're gonna move your sculpture around looking at it from multiple angles and looking at the shape of the body. I highly recommend looking at sculptures that you're interested in. Do you prefer sculptures that are really sleek and smooth? Do you like more of a texture? Do you wanna make it bulkier? Do you wanna make it a larger size person? Do you want to exaggerate or abstract any of the features? Right now I'm just focusing on some of my awkward lumps from the wire uh, armature and just trying to make the connections look right. I'll spend a lot of time, especially on the hips, the glutes, and where the legs connect to the pelvis. You can see I'm using a paintbrush too to kind of fill in any of the gaps. And I do like the texture of the gauze. So that is going to show up, the cotton gauze that the plaster is attached to, that texture will also show up. So I'm just gonna pay attention to each part of the body, making my legs thicker here, because I'm thinking if the thigh is thicker, it'll look more natural leading up into the pelvis. Then I'm doing a combination of strips and pieces of plaster that I ball up and form into the shapes that I want them. I'm gonna do this on pretty much all the parts of the body, trying to get it the way I want it, trying to get the muscles to look the way I want, and making sure that the arms are equal and that the legs are equal too. I think this stage is a little bit more tricky and more time consuming than the initial first layer because that layer you're simply just covering your surface that you already created out of wire. Now though, you're thinking less skeleton and more muscle mass and that can be tricky to get it right and you might love it from one angle and the arm might look beautiful extended but then you flip it over and look at it from the other side and there might be some issues with it. So it does take a lot of time. I like to do this over the course of several days so that I can come back and look at it with fresh eyes. So at this point, the hand's super simple. Take a clump of plaster, wrap it around. If you wanna make it bigger, if you wanna add even fingers, you can do that as well. And just make sure you cover up all the wire. And don't forget the wrist, same technique with the neck, just use a scarf-like wrapping to really make that indention separate from the arm from the hand. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my foot to my base for stability. Now Dylan picked a very stable pose. I've had students who have their sculptures sitting, doing a handstand, maybe balancing on one foot. So for this, you really don't need to focus too much on the connection depending on your pose, but I also want the texture of the gauze to extend down as well. Once you're totally satisfied, let your sculpture dry and cure for 24 hours at least before you paint. I'm going to start with a black acrylic base coat for the metallic style that I'm going for. You can paint this however you want. You can use acrylic paint, you can spray paint it, you can do whatever, but I'm going to do my tried and true metallic dry brush technique. It's really simple. It's great for a sculpture class because many students might not know how to paint. Painting is such a learned skill. This is an easy way to make your sculpture look expensive, nice, and metallic. Make sure to look at your sculpture from all angles and use a little water on your brush to get all those pesky white spots you're not gonna get the first time. Once it's completely dry, I'm going to use this Metallic Amico Rub and Buff Sculpture Paint. It's oil-based and it does smell, so you can also use metallic acrylic paint as well. 
It's important to use a dry brush and a brush you really don't care about because you're going to be buffing the paint into the textured areas and it's a little bit hard on the brush. So use a utility brush or maybe a retired paintbrush that you used to use with acrylic. And I have a ton of those in my classroom set aside for our sculpture techniques. Less is more with this technique. You can always layer your colors and this just is so nice. It amplifies amplifies the textures, it emphasizes the areas that naturally protrude. I am such a fan of this technique and it's fail safe. Even the most timid painter can do an amazing job with this technique. If you're interested in more ways to use a metallic dry brush technique, click the link above for my favorite metallic dry brush on clay. Just like you saw me do with the black paint, I'm going to flip my sculpture, rotate it so that I can get all the angles. You can use multiple colors. This brand comes with lots of different options. So you could do a base color and then add like a lighter gold or silver for highlights. You could do a darker bronze for shadows, or you can keep it simple and just do the black base with whatever base or whatever metallic color you want on top. I am a fan of adding um, some highlights. So think of the areas that you want to really be shiny, like parts of the face, maybe the shoulder, the arms extended, tops of the feet. And don't forget all also to put a layer on your base. It's also fun to make the base another color or to blend maybe ombre, so from like dark to light, maybe darker at the base and lighter as you get uh, to the top of the head. The options are really endless. You can keep it as simple as this or you can go to town with your painting. And you might have a lot of painting skills where you want to um, add more details than what I'm showing you how to do in this video. All right, I'm feeling finished. I am loving the end result. Thank you, Dylan, for letting me use your sculpture to play with. And this is one of my favorite sculpture lessons ever. The results are amazing. If you want more sculpture tutorials, check these out. And if you're interested in what my students are up to in my classroom, find me on Instagram at thatartteacher underscore Machado and visit my website, thatartteacher.com for full length lesson plans, rubrics, and student examples.